Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. So it's been an interesting past couple days in Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure as you're all well aware, there was the entire incident that's happened with George Floyd, uh, who was, from what I can tell, uh, murdered by some police officers. And following, there's been some riots, uh, Several businesses have been burned to the ground, and looting has gotten way out of control. And uh, it's, it's been some interesting past couple days. Uh, I've been thinking about it, and the more I think about it, I think that there's there's a continual theme here. Uh, you know, the, these things are layered, right? I mean, there's like the raw emotional anger, which... I think is justified in this case is is right. Uh, you know, there's there's just a lot of rage around stuff like this, which again, in, in this case, I think is is justified. And I've felt some of that myself here, um, and been pretty mad at a couple points along this whole deal. And so as I've thought about it, uh, the theme that I keep coming back to is a overgrown, overblown, overreaching government. And, and that's how we end up in situations like this. I might be reaching, I'm not, I'm not trying to reach just to stuff this into my own uh, political understanding and my own view of things or, or to even make it political. I'm, I'm just saying that's really what I think one of the, like the root root causes is here. If you go down a couple levels, that's, that's the bedrock on which stuff like this is built. And so I'd like to like to explain that to hopefully convince you that that's one of the problems and, and that's the reason we shouldn't have big government in this country. And it's the reason that the government shouldn't be the solution to our problems because they end up becoming the problem. So to back up a couple steps here, and the reason I kind of picked that for my theme because this mo this latest deal with, with George Floyd, I just consider kind of the crescendo of, of what's happening. And here's what I mean. So we've had this coronavirus thing going on for weeks, which has been a whole other host of issues, right? And the most common response from state governments, uh, especially the ones run by Democrats, is is lockdown, right? It's, it's, it's total control of your life. You can't go here. You can't see these people. You can't do this. You know, it, it's a wild infringement on your First Amendment rights. So bad that in Wisconsin, the Supreme Court even struck it down, saying it was unconstitutional. Good job for them. So in Minnesota here, we're still under a quasi lockdown deal. You're not supposed to be able to gather in groups over a certain size and on and on and on. All the states around us, the only one I don't know for sure is uh, Iowa, but are, are open. Wisconsin, like I said, they struck it down there. South Dakota never closed down. They never had a stay at home order. They never had any of that garbage. Uh, North Dakota is opening back up and I'm not 100% sure about Iowa, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's also opening back up. And Minnesota remains close. Uh, I think we are, have a total of circa 900 deaths right now in Minnesota from coronavirus. 81% uh, of those, last I knew, that could have changed in the last couple days, are from uh, long-term care facilities. Because in Minnesota, what they did is they put people with COVID-19 into long care term facilities with a bunch of old people, and surprise, surprise, a bunch of them get sick and die. Who could have seen that coming? Same policy they did in New York, and it's been as disastrous in Minnesota as it was there. And then, of course, the government turns around and says, well, because it's really dangerous, we, we have to tell you what to do and where to go. So you do the math on that. So uh, that's one really big theme that's come out, right? Like this, this in total infringement on your First Amendment rights, uh, on, on who you can see and when you can see them and where you're allowed to go. I mean, like communist China level kind of, of infringement, right? And then, so the, the reason I'm, I'm connecting that to the, the Floyd incident is because we have a thing in this country where police officers break the law and seem to get away with it and aren't charged, uh, aren't even charged sometimes. I remember the Eric Garner deal back in New York several years ago uh, where they used an illegal chokehold on a guy who was selling loose cigarettes and he died and the police officers weren't even charged. That's pretty bad, right? So there, there's this thing, there's this theme here of police officers doing things they shouldn't be doing that are illegal, people end up dying, and police officers aren't even charged. And, and I think that's one of the reasons there's a lot of anger. So one of the reason there's a lot of anger for me about it, when, when I sit and really think about it, is because we're not living by the same laws. We're not playing by the same rules. Rather, government agents 
get to live by different laws than the rest of us. And this is the result of that, I would argue. Uh, the reason there's riots and people get so mad and so emotional is because they don't think that justice is going to happen, right? If, if we believed justice was coming, we would not feel as visceral and angry response to things like this, right? For example, if, if I were to get shot on the street tomorrow by some, uh, some person, right, a robbery gone bad or whatever, um, it wouldn't, no one's going to protest that. No, no one's going to really care, partly because I'm, I'm not known, but more importantly, uh, because we would assume justice is going to be done there. Well, they arrested the guy that shot him. You know, he's in jail. Yeah, he's going to go to jail for murder. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear, right? That, that'd be clear. No, no one's going to get upset about that and, and be mad that justice isn't being served. But when it's someone with a badge that does it to someone without a badge under extremely dubious, at best, circumstances, no one really believes justice is going to happen. And, and so there's this visceral, angry reaction. And that's what happens when we let the government play by different rules and laws than we have to play by, right? It's like the mayor of Chicago when she went and got a haircut, even though the whole city was on lockdown, and now threatens people with arrest if they leave their houses. When she sent police cars to churches to knock down doors and arrest people who are at church because they were breaking her order, right? It's that kind of hypocrisy. It's that kind of big government is the solution and different rules for us and different rules for you. And that's what leads me to this place, like I said, where that's the theme for me. It, it, it's a big government is the problem. And when we look to it as a solution, these are the results that we can end up getting because there's different laws for them, there's different rules for them, and there's not the same rules for us. So that comes back to my argument, my hope for you is that out of this, you would realize we should continue to fight to shrink the size of the government. Uh, I don't want government paid health care. I can't even trust them to do the policing part. Why on good God, on God's good earth would I want them in charge of whether or not I'm allowed to have a heart surgery, right? Uh, I, I don't think that increased reliance and growing the government in any spectrum is going to be a good thing. I think instead it leads to things like this, where you have a government agent acting in a certain way that's not right and then it leads the rest of us feeling helpless and frustrated and disenfranchised. If we shrink the size of the government and we shrink the control and power of the government, these things are less likely to happen and there will be greater repercussions for when they do. I'm not saying it'll never happen. You can't get rid of human sin. That's impossible until Jesus comes back. Until then, we have to deal with the, the problem, which is people, right? You, me, everybody. We're all sinful people, and that's the problem. And by limiting the power of those that are, are in government, we can help curb things like this. So if you've never thought about that, if you've made that connection, I hope that's helpful for you. I hope that gives some kind of perspective on it. Um, obviously, this is a terrible deal and a terrible situation. And I, I really just think it, it, the theme there is... is the the government has grown too big for its britches. There were some there's some good and bad stories coming out of this. So I also saw a video of some guys during the riots where they had their AR slung up and they were out protecting like a local cigar shop. And I thought, hey, great, great, good for those guys. Uh, I also saw reported incidents of police going to people who were open carrying, uh, cuffing them, detaining them, and confiscating their gun. They'd let them go, but they confiscate their gun, which in Minnesota, under Minnesota law, is 100% legal, like 1,000% illegal. Sorry, it's illegal. It's not legal. That is 100% illegal. You can't do that, like by, by any stretch. No, no crime has been committed. They just, oh, you're open carrying a gun. We're going to confiscate that, right? So nothing like doubling down on authoritarianism after you've already gotten hot water by being too authoritarian. So again, these are the themes that I come back to. I'm not trying to force this to fit my, my political viewpoint or my political spectrum or anything. I really honestly think that's the bedrock cause is when the government gets too big, these are the results that we have to live with. So I'd like you to consider that. Think about it if you haven't. You can tell me I'm a moron or whatever, but I really think there's, there's a piece to it there. I really firmly believe that George Floyd could have been anybody. Uh, me, you, anybody. I, I believe that. Because again, I think the, po the root problem is, is overblown government power and people getting to live by different laws than everyday citizens get to live by. And so I, I firmly believe that could have been me. There's no reason it couldn't have been. So 
think about it. Let me know what you think. I know we're all in an uproar and uh, there's a lot of anger and frustration and a lot of it is very legitimate. Rioting and looting is, well, looting is definitely bad. Rioting, depending on how you define that, might not be so bad, but looting is definitely bad. <sighs> Do brave deeds and endure.